Good morning. Welcome to Cafe Worship. This is uh, a much more informal service, and you are invited um, to refill your cups during worship. If you want more coffee or tea, please feel free to get up. Somebody also said if you're drinking coffee this early, it might have another effect. Please feel free to do that as well. And so, one of the benefits of cafe worship is that we get to connect with one another and also the biblical text in a more tangible way. So the idea being that we will literally be breaking bread together as we explore the story of Emmaus Road and the experience of offering hospitality to Jesus. So there will be portions of the worship service that are familiar and then there will be um, a bit of a monologue. There's a little bit of a drama going to happen today. And then there's going to be an opportunity for you to chat with one another. There will be questions up on the screen to guide your conversation. And you'll have an opportunity then to break bread together, but also to, to share in conversation about uh, our faith, about our life of faith, and about the uh, text itself, Emmaus Road. So I hope that you um, find this experience fulfilling and enriching as you, we journey uh, in faith together. And so, as we enter into this time of worship, we respectfully acknowledge that Grace United Church is located on the Treaty 20 Michisagi Territory and in the traditional territory of the Michisagi and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island First Nations. Grace United Church respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty's First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. Okay, so we have a few announcements this morning. Um, I'll start off with mine. Bridge North United Church is having a concert on Friday night featuring Irish Millie. And Irish Millie is a young woman who, um, out of Lakefield, who plays the fiddle and writes her own music. Her dad will be there to accompany her on guitar. And she was just nominated for a Rising Star Award. She was in Newfoundland for the um, Canadian Folk Music Festival, and she was nominated as a Rising Star. So um, if you would like to attend the concert next, uh, this coming Friday night, uh, tickets are $20. I have some here. Uh, you can see me after church, and I'll make sure you get hooked up with some tickets. Um, we have um, Sandwich Sisters meeting tomorrow morning. Uh, I saw lots of bread coming in today, so that's good news. And if you are interested in helping out with that, please feel free any time to pop over and, and uh, make some sandwiches. Um, two spaghetti dinners coming up in May, so mark your calendars for that as well. And um, it's time, April showers, obviously. Spring and spring cleaning are uh, a thing, and so I invite you as you're doing some of that spring cleaning to, to put aside your treasures that you might consider not treasures anymore, and, uh, but somebody else will. And so you're having um, a treasures in the trunk sale on July the 6th, so please hang on to your treasures for a little while longer and we'll have an opportunity to sell them there. Uh, Carol, you had an announcement. Just wanted to re just wanted to remind you. <laughs> just wanted to remind you that our roast beef dinner for the health cabinet is coming up this Saturday. Lots of planning has gone into this, and we are um, 
extending our needs to um, congregational people. Martin Wood is helping us with part of the meal, and Peter Pauly from across the way and his culinary people will also be helping the health cabinet who are going to look after your desserts. Saturday, 5.30 here in the auditorium. Tickets are available through Tina Dick, who's um, doing coffee this morning. So pick them up on your way. Cost $25 per ticket. Thank you for your attention. Hope to see you there. Bye-bye. This Saturday? Oh, yes, this Saturday, this Saturday. for sure. Um, yeah, that'll be a, yeah, it won't be rushing, won't we? Well, well that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, thank you. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Okay. Let's enter into this time of worship with the lighting of the Christ candle. As the light of resurrection joy shines out from the empty tomb. And so, we meet together once again this morning to continue the journey of faith. To walk with God along the pathways of life. To travel the road of fear and hope where we put our trust in God's grace and love to guide us. Let us worship this day with gratitude for the companionship of the risen Christ who travels with us always. Let us pray together. Risen one, on the road to Emmaus, you met two strangers and you walked with them. Be our companion on the way too. Open us to your word and your will for our lives. Feed us with the bread of life and give us courage to witness to your love wherever our journeys take us. We pray in faith and trust. Amen. And as you feel comfortable. Hey now, singing hallelujah. Hey now, the morning has come. At the rising sun Jesus loved people and he made them friends Hey, now the tomb was empty He called to the children and the women and men Hey, now the tomb was empty Hey, now Singing hallelujah Hey, now The morning has come The tomb was empty at the rising sun Jesus healed people and he helped them be well Hey, now the tomb was empty He taught about God in the stories he'd tell Hey, now the tomb was empty Hey, now Singing hallelujah Hey, now The morning has come The tomb was empty at the rising sun Jesus loved people and they said he was a king Hey, now the tomb was empty He turned all the tables on everything Hey, now the tomb was empty Hey, now Singing hallelujah Hey, now The morning has come At the rising sun, he 
Jesus had power and they took him away. Hey, now the tomb was empty. They nailed him to a cross and they killed him one day. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now. Singing hallelujah. Hey, now. The morning has come. Hey, now. Singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. loves people and he lives again. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Calls us disciples and he calls us his friends. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now. Singing hallelujah. Hey, now. The morning has come. Hey, now. Singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. Darlene, what is our scripture? Oh, you have a copy. The scripture uh, today will be Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. This morning we will hear, hear the, go the gospel story of the road to Amos, a tale of two travelers who meet a stranger on the road and amidst their grief and despair share with him their traumatic experiences over the past few days. If the word of the disciples has been turned upside down by the life and teachings of Jesus, think of how the same word world had been rocked by his death. Even so, they haven't had time to absorb that calamity when new stories have sprung up about his rising from the dead. Think of times when the news or your own life unfolded in ways that shook the foundations of what you believed in, what you counted on perhaps too fast for you to process and integrate into your understanding. Like those disciples long ago, we are often trying to integrate new information and experiences into our old world view. We may feel especially anxious and uncertain about what the future will bring. Perhaps then we can relate a bit of those uh, disciples long ago, trying to make sense of life after losing the one who had brought new meaning, new hope, new trust to their lives. Where was the next chapter of the story leading them in the midst of this sorrow and loss? Let's journey along the road to a mouse with Jesus in the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. That same day, two of them were walking to the village, a mass, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They, had, they were deep in conversation going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there long-faced like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? He said, what has happened? They said, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in word and work, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death, and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, 
just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets say? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the book of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So he went in with them, and here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them. Taking the bread, he blessed and broke and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't you feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened. The master has been raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two went over everything that happened on the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. This is the wisdom of the scriptures. May we be blessed by its teaching. Amen. Two friends on our way, on the dusty road, talking, listening, sharing pain and confusion. Another walks with us, unknown, looks into our eyes, listens to lost hopes and wild rumors. He speaks. We hear the story of grace as though for the first time. As, as we, we travel, travel on, on, we have arrived. He wants to go further on his way. 
we ask him to stay as dusk falls on the dusty road. We go indoors, sit, tired, at a table to share a meal. He takes bread, blesses it, breaks and offers it to us. We then see who is our companion. But he was gone. We, we remember. remember the journey, the words we heard. The everyday presence of road, table, and broken bread. We know that the news must be shared. We cannot stay put. But here and now set out back along the dusty road. Two, Two friends, friends go on God's way. way. Amen. Thank you, Ralph. I'd like to take a few moments to introduce the monologue that I'm about to share with you. The inspiration for writing comes from a variety of sources. Commentaries, songs, poetry, art. All play a part in deepening our exploration and imagination of the stories found in scripture. When you expand on a, on a scripture story and add your, your own, own creativity creative. to the written text, it is an ancient Jewish practice called Midrash. And so with curiosity, we can be led into fresh understanding of a very old story. And in my research for this particular text, I found a reference to a painting that hangs in the National Gallery of Ireland. It's entitled, The Kitchen Maid, by Spanish artist Diego Velazquez. It was painted in the 1600s, and it imagines the young girl eavesdropping on the conversation around the table in the Emmaus Road story. And it inspired a poem by Denise Levertov, three centuries later, that I'd like to share with you. She listens, listens holding her breath. Surely that voice is his, the one who had looked at her once across the crowd as no one had ever looked. Surely those hands were his, taking the platter of bread from hers just now. Hands he'd laid on the dying and made them well. Surely that face, the man they'd crucified for sedition and blasphemy, the man whose body disappeared from its tomb, the man it was rumored now some women had seen this morning alive, those who had brought this stranger home to their table don't recognize yet with whom they sit, but she in the kitchen absently touching the wine jug she's to take in, a young black servant, intently listening, swings round and sees the light around him and is sure. Just as Denise's poem was inspired by this artwork, so I was inspired to write this monologue. 
This is Emmaus Road and the art of breaking bread. Oh, not yet, Ross. I don't need you yet. I don't need you yet. <laughs> it's like... It's like we woke up from a nightmare and found ourselves in a dream. It's been a couple of weeks now, and I still can't believe what we've experienced. You see, my brother Cleopas and I, my name is Sarah, by the way, we had followed Jesus into the city for the festival. Cleopas was so excited. He had become more and more passionate about Jesus' message and wanted to be part of that cheering crowd. And so we traveled to Jerusalem and waved our palm branches at the parade and shouted, Hosanna! with the others inside the city gates. We were staying with our aunt and uncle for the festival. And I was helping my aunt prepare food for all the guests that were coming for the meal. Everyone loves my bread. So I was up to my elbows in yeast and flour for about two days. But our celebration turned to a wake pretty quickly when we learned about Jesus' arrest and that sham of a trial. I have to tell you, that was a terrible, terrible day. We stood by and watched the crucifixion, waiting, holding our breath, that some miracle would change the outcome. But Jesus died. We saw him die. And with him, our hope died too. Our hope for ourselves, for our people, for the Messiah that we were so sure would save us. We were heartbroken and confused and numb with grief as we made our preparations to return home following the day of rest. And just as we were walking, it's a long way back to Emmaus. News started rippling out into the community that a woman had gone to the tomb and found it empty. We didn't understand how this was possible after all that we had seen and wondered if it was simply unimaginable grief that caused the rumor to spread. And so we set out for home. What a change from how we'd left there only days before full of excitement and hope and possibility. I'm not sure that Cleopas and I exchanged more than a few words for those first few miles. We were just too heartsick and confused. But before long, The grief and the anger started to pour out of me, and I cried out to my brother, and really to God, why? Why did the cries of Hosanna turn so quickly into shouts of crucify? 
Why did the crowds become so angry and lose sight of everything that he taught us? And why? Why was the tomb empty? How could Jesus be alive? It just, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, We had so much hope heading into Jerusalem, and now we're heading home with so many questions. And then, when we were just a few miles from home, there was suddenly a stranger alongside us. I hadn't heard any footsteps coming closer. He was just suddenly there. Maybe I was too lost in my own thoughts to pay attention. But it was shocking to have him just show up out of nowhere like that. And then he wanted to know what we were talking about. And Cleopas just looked at him in shock and said, Are you the only person in Jerusalem that hasn't heard what's been going on these last few days? And when the stranger still looked puzzled, Cleopas explained what had happened and how Jesus had been killed, and now there were rumors that he was somehow alive. And we just didn't understand any of it. And then the stranger told us about how this was the fulfillment of Scripture. And he knew all the verses and all the stories that spoke of the Messiah, and we were enthralled by everything he had to say. When we finally arrived home, I quickly invited the stranger to stay. As is our custom of hospitality, and my mother would be mortified that she didn't raise me properly if I didn't, but it was more than that. I just couldn't bear to see him go. There was just something compelling about him. My heart beat faster when he'd spoken of scripture and its powerful meaning. And when I opened the door, the smell of supper cooking blessed us as we entered, and I rushed to the kitchen, leaving my brother to make our guest welcome. Hannah, our kitchen helper, was there, clearing up the dishes from my parents' meal. But fortunately, there was still plenty of food left, and there was a whole loaf of bread, not quite as good as mine, that was still warming in the oven. And when I explained that we had an unexpected guest, Hannah and I worked quickly to put the food out since it was a long walk from Jerusalem and the men had to be hungry. Hannah placed the bread on the table and filled their cups with wine as I filled their bowls with vegetables and meat from the pot simmering by the fire. In no time, supper was on the table And then, as I stood by the kitchen door to see if they needed anything else, the stranger picked up the bread, blessed it, and broke it. And then suddenly, the room was filled with light, and the shadows that had covered our eyes as we walked home were lifted. And we knew, we knew it was Jesus. Cleopas glanced up at me in amazement, and in that moment, Jesus was gone, simply vanished right before our eyes. And then Cleopas said, what do we do now? And I said, we go back to Jerusalem. We have to tell the others what we've seen. Jesus is alive. Mary was telling the truth. Get your cloak. There's no time to waste. 
And we rushed with much lighter feet back down that road because Jesus had risen from the dead. We had received our miracle, not in the way we had initially hoped, but we received it just the same. And isn't that how God works? In wondrous, mysterious ways that we aren't meant to fully understand. It's a little like baking bread with simple ingredients, flour, water, salt, and some yeast. It magically becomes something wonderful. And in the breaking and sharing of that bread, we are nourished, strengthened, and loved into being by the one who calls us beloved. Isn't that miraculous? Amen. How did we not see? Oh, I'm voice, I'm voice too. Go ahead. <laughs> Getting a little over myself here. How did we not see? Why did it take so long to recognize him? The man who sat with the leper and spoke to him and touched his wounds and spoke about healing, a healing that was more than making him better, but restored him to family and community. Reborn, 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 reborn like Jairus' daughter, lying dead in her room, her father out searching for a miracle and finding Jesus, who in, who, who in heaven's own time sat quietly with her and called her back into life, into, into, life, life. into, into life. life, into life, into a life that was now lived generously for Zacharias who repaid all those he has taken from, from tree climber to social climber, outcast to newly cast, forgiven and accepted by grace as Jesus ate with him, with him, with, with him. him. With him, it was always an adventure that took us to the borders of country, culture, and faith, where we met people on the edge we weren't meant to speak to, but he did. The woman at the well who offered to draw water for him as he offered living water instead. 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 Instead, instead of going to the temple for prayer, he threw the tables, freed the doves, rolled the coins, and broke the money changes. This was the kind of prayer we all wanted, except we used words. He used actions. 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 Actions speak louder than words. And as he took the bread and blessed it and broke it, sparks flew, light escaped, heaven erupted in a thousand shards, as in a holy explosion. We saw him, saw, saw him, him, saw him, him, saw him among us. And we wondered about a bread that cont could contain such a miracle and knew it wasn't the bread. It was in the telling of the story. For in sharing it, we began to trust these stories once more, trust the truth they contained. And in our believing, we saw him once more, once more, once, once more. more. Once more, he said, share the bread. It holds the story of Jesus. And whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of him. And so these are the gifts of God for the people of God. I'd like to invite you into a time of breaking bread and sharing with one another. Thank you, Ross.
For those of you that are watching through the live stream, I invite you to pour yourself a cup of coffee, maybe make yourself a piece of toast, and think about the questions as they come up on the screen. And for those of you gathered here at table, I invite you to take the cloth off the plate between you and share in the bread and the grapes and your coffee and your juice and your tea and enter into communion with one another at table.
sisters, yeah, for sure. In the food pantry, yeah. Coffee after church. Coffee after church, absolutely. Communion. Communion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so thinking about the Emmaus Road story and how that pair journeyed with Jesus along the road and didn't recognize him, are there opportunities in your own life where you may have walked with Jesus and didn't know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're supposed to be prepared all the time. How many of us are prepared all the time? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's hard, right? It's a really hard thing to do, to be aware. And oftentimes, we see it in hindsight, right? Oh my goodness, that was an experience of Jesus and I didn't know it till now. It's like that breaking of bread. Oh, that's who it is. And so it is that often in hindsight experience where we go, oh, that was an experience of grace, of love, of forgiveness, of Jesus. Yes. Yes. To be intent, absolutely. To pay attention and and notice those God moments when they're happening. That takes um, an awareness, right? Of and it's a a habit that you have to form. I think for sure, for sure. Yes. Mm hmm. Right. I see the face of God in you and in me. Right? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. There's, yeah, all those experiences, right, bring us into face to face connection with the divine. And it's a wonderful blessing to be able to experience that. You are at table with one another, sharing. So as the service um, continues and then we wind down, please don't rush. Spend time. Take the time to be together. That's what this is about. And I will dash out when I have to. But for now, for now, let us have a word of prayer together. Let us come to God in prayer. Risen one, like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, we often struggle to recognize you in the everyday journeys of our lives. We seek your wisdom in the midst of questions and doubts that we may have about the circumstances we find ourselves in, circumstances that are sometimes beyond our control and sometimes of our own making. Open our eyes, Holy One, to your work of transformation in and around us. As we walk with you day by day, may your new life be made manifest in what we say to others. Help us to understand the power of our words, to hurt or to heal. Give us graciousness to make all our conversations holy. Just as we desire that our speaking be holy, may our seeing be holy too. We are bombarded with images every day, O oh God, that shape our attitudes and behaviors. As you opened the scriptures to your disciples and taught them everything, open our eyes to see you in the words of hope and promise found in scripture and also in the beauty of the world around us, the wonder of new life found in nature, the beauty of another human being and the creativity of the arts. And in our seeing, help us to recognize and welcome the stranger in our midst. May our welcome be a celebration of the gifts and graces of people who are different from us, and not just some token tolerance of an outsider. May we see you in everyone we meet as we travel the road of life together. This we pray in wonder and gratitude. Amen. Sharing 
with family and friends is an act of loving kindness. Sharing with strangers is an act of compassion that is integral to our mission as followers of Jesus. May we be generous in our sharing. Let us dedicate our gifts to God. What can I do? Let us pray. Generous God, like, like the, the disciples at Emmaus, we offer what we have. They offered their company, their table, their bread. We pray that you will bless what we have to offer, our love, our devotion, our gifts, that they may be shared both near and far. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In breaking bread, in conversation, in, in community, community, we build up the body of Christ. In witnessing to the risen Christ, we hear the good news of God's unending grace. This is the joy of Easter. This is our joy to share. May the blessing of God, creator Christ and spirit, enliven our faith this day and always. Amen. <laughs>